You're listening to the Tom Hartman Program. In response to the Supreme Court's terrible decision giving corporations First Amendment rights, dozens of current and former corporate executives from corporations including Delta, Playboy Enterprises, Ben & Jerry, Seagram's, Hasbro, Delta Airlines, Men's Warehouse, and Crate & Barrel sent a letter to Congress asking that it immediately pass the Fair Elections Now Act, which would publicly finance all congressional campaigns out of a special fund created by a fee levied on TV broadcasters. They said they're tired of getting fundraising calls from lawmakers, and now it's going to get worse. Well, actually, these relatively small corporations really have nothing to worry about when it comes to getting more fundraising calls from members of Congress. Their smaller contributions will be replaced by billions from big oil, big pharma, big agriculture, big retailing, big media, and big manufacture in China. What they really have to worry about is that these huge huge corporations will use their new Supreme Court-granted political power to wipe them out altogether. Robber Baron Industries can now drop billions to lobby to simply make illegal smaller companies, doing this primarily the way they have in many cases over years and years, through regulation. They They now can control the government or forcing them to sell to giant conglomerates. Reagan and Clinton brought us goodbye small business. Our malls and downtowns are now almost totally nationally, national chains. Now you can say goodbye to medium-sized businesses and even big American corporations as well. Transnational, German, Japanese, and, corpor- and, and Chinese corporations, corporations based in countries that are communist dictatorships, can now legally buy our politicians and use the power of the state to put their competitors out of business. Quick test. I know that you're going to think the answer to this is vampires, but it's not. Who has no fear of natural death and can exist for centuries? Whose long existence can acquire far more wealth than any individual could in their lifetime? Who derives more strength? Who derives their strength from from the blood and flesh of real human beings? Who has no children and therefore no need for good schools? Who does not drink clean water or breathe clean air? Or eat wholesome food, and therefore doesn't need or care about those things. Who can who can only be killed by great effort and daring in an in an unequal contest that humans are likely to lose? Who has the power to confuse people into acting in self-destructive manners? And a tip of the hat to Joshua Ezekiel for for uh, coming up with this. Um, no, not vampires. Corporations. The American Civil Rights Union, the right-wing analog of the American Civil Liberties Union, which also filed an amicus brief, a friend of the court brief, on behalf of corporate personhood, both of these organizations, ACLU, ACRU, both filed briefs saying, yes, give corporations First Amendment rights. Peter Ferrara is here. He's with the ACRU, the General Counsel for the American Civil Rights Union, TheACRU.org is the website. Peter, welcome back to our show. Glad to be here. What possible rationale is there in the Constitution? The word, as you as you well know, the word corporation does not exist in the in the Constitution. What possible rationale is there for giving an illegal abstraction, an entity that has no physical existence at all, legal abstraction, a corporation, access to the Bill of Rights? Well, the whole opinion addressed that, so it's funny that you should ask that question. But corporations are just collections of individuals, uh, and they should have the same right to express their views, same right of free speech as anyone else. In this Why? Case, you have... In, 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 in individuals this, can express their opinions. i got no problem with that. That's explicitly what the Constitution says. But why should a Chinese corporation acting on the behalf of the Chinese military be able to determine who's going to be my senator by outspending three to one some other senator here in the state of Oregon? Uh, corporations are just collections of individuals. And so so individuals what? Individuals should have the same right of free speech as anyone else. In no, they case, should not. A, a collection of individuals is not you. an let individual. Me, you don't know what you're talking about, so let me educate you. In this case, you had a corporation that was a collection of individuals who expressly 
formed the corporation for ideological purposes. No, to, I'm sorry, Peter. Peter, I'm so sorry, they, you they don't know what you're talking about. First of all, I've written a book on this. It's called Unequal Protection: wow. The Rise of Corporate Power and the Threat of Anybody Human. read that and, book? And, and 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 it is used in law schools around the United States. And I would I would suggest that you inform yourself about this. Are you familiar with Dodge v. Well, but, uh, Ford, uh, well, for example? Oh, mate, I guess I Dodge guess v. Ford explicitly no says about, that either. corporations must oh, are formed to make money, not for egalitarian purposes. What the Supreme Court said is the whole purpose of the First Amendment was to maximize speech. The government has no role not to equalize speech. The government has no idea what it cannot equalize speech, has no idea Among what it people. Doing to equalize speech. Moreover, as the court said, which you don't understand, this just involves speech, which people can accept or reject as they choose. Among uh, and, people. And, and, then you're, yeah, yeah, and corporations are collections of people. That's why they Not have collections of people, they, they people. Are just, they are just collections of people, and that's why they do have the same First Amendment rights as anybody else, despite what your hyster hysterical nonsense uh, ha has to say about it. So that, that is why they did it, because the whole idea was to maximize freedom of speech as the free marketplace of ideas. And worst of all, in your argument, is your suggestion that somehow the liberal message won't be able to get through. All you hear all day long is... The I have not suggested that. I'm suggesting to you that the conservative message is doomed. The New York Times, from the Washington Post, all you hear is this uninformed, illogical liberal message on every issue all day long. So the idea that you're, that's not going to get through is completely nuts. Thank you. You're welcome, Peter. And uh, first of all, I'm as concerned about the conservative message as the liberal message. To the extent that either one starts becoming populist or anti-corporate, it will get shut down. Secondly, the 14th Amendment, which is, which is what this traces itself to, it, it traces itself through a series of, of, of decisions, and I'm sure you've, you've, you're familiar with them, Boston versus Bilotti, um, uh, First National Bank of Boston versus Bilotti, um, and, and others um, going back. These all you know, reference back to, in some cases, Dartmouth in, 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 19, in 1817, as I recall, or 1807, whenever it was, uh, but in most cases, 1886, Santa Clara County. But here's the, 14, the 14th Amendment on which this is based. All persons born or naturalized in the United States and subject to the jurisdiction thereof are citizens of the United States and of the state wherein they reside. No state shall make or enforce any law which shall abridge the privileges or immunities of citizens of the United States, nor shall any state deprive any person of life, liberty, or property without due process of law. Now, it doesn't say collections of persons. It says person. And the argument that was made in 1886 is that Blackstone's law, going back to literally 8th century England, British common law, Blackstone said that there are two types of persons, artificial persons, corporations, churches, and governments, and natural persons, human beings. They both have to have a legal status so they can both pay taxes, sue and be sued, and own property. Because the word natural is not before the word person, the Supreme Court Justice John Chandler Bancroft Davis in 1886 wrote in the headnote to that case that corporations therefore have rights as persons. The case did not decide that. If you re actually read Santa Clara, they it rejected that notion. But that has been the basis up to this point. How can you possibly say that a collection of persons should have a voice when the Constitution says person? Congress shall make no law abridging the freedom of speech. That's what the First Amendment said. The Supreme Court here ruled that the law is struck down, abridged the freedom of speech. So that's how you can possibly do it. The the, the freedom of speech of person. You, you you don't think? Are you asserting that the Constitution of the United States is not we the people, but rather we the corporations? Look, this case. The first three words of the case, Constitution. This case involved a concrete corporation that was a collection of individuals that came together for the express purpose of engaging in ideological political speech. And their speech was bridged. The court decided this case. And so your, your conception of it is completely wrong. These people did have their freedom of speech violated. Moreover, the decision, unfortunately, is going to help the crazy left more than it's going to help the right, because labor unions will be more aggressive in using this freedom than corporations will. Because they have so much more money? Because they're so much more aggressive with it. Businesses have to sell products to the public. They're very scared about offending their customer base all the time. That's so they are much more reticent to get involved. This is the Tom Hartman Program.